Kelly Shaw, Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. I'm up here with uh, my friend Rob, Robert. We're uh, taking a look at the area. Um, I, he lives close by in the town of Brigham. And I told him I like looking around back in Manaway because uh, the Bigfoot sightings in the canyon down there. And he knows this area pretty well. We're gonna go to an abandoned cabin abandoned structure I like checking those out because of uh, some of the activity found around them so you know you just kind of need a goal a place to go and look for Bigfoot evidence and uh, here's a creek goes right across the trail and look at these uh, these berries I don't know what those are so I won't be eating them you don't know what it is you don't touch it and uh, a lot of people say red is dead so they're red and you don't know what they are Reds. definitely stay away from them look like they're growing on some some type of a vine I've done some Bigfoot sighting reports close to here because of the sightings uh, Wellsville um, Sardine Canyon and then uh, there's a campground not too far from here where there was a sighting that I did a report from. So I'll put uh, links to those videos in the description of this one so you guys can see the reason why we're in this area looking around. Wasp nest above you coming up. Yeah, there it is. Rob mapped out our hike on, uh, I think, Google Maps before we started out. Help keep us from getting lost. So we're headed up right there, the end of that black, the dot, dot, dot right there. Okay. There's oak right here. So that's, that's the shape of an oak leaf. I always tell my kids, um, it's an upside down Christmas tree, is how you can tell oak leaves. So you flip it upside down and you see how that kind of has a, a Christmas tree shape. Well, um, oak, even some of the smallest oak brush, they produce acorns in uh, the fall. And the deer, the elk, rabbits, other animals, they just love the acorns. Well, um, it's like I was telling Rob, um, I, went to the Squaw Peak out by Provo Canyon after those guys filmed that Bigfoot. And to me, that's a credible Bigfoot sighting because they caught it on video and it looks like the real deal to me. That's my gut instinct. There's more of the oak brush right here. Well, I went up and visited it firsthand. They, they filmed it in the fall. And I went up to where it happened and that Bigfoot was standing in the middle of a thicket of, of oak, oak brush like this. So I have a hunch it was there for the acorns. Right time of year, right type of plant, you know, or it's hunting the animals that, uh, that eat the acorns. And in my opinion, for a creature to get that big, it's just like a, a grizzly or a black bear. It's probably an omnivore. So it, it's eating the acorns and it's eating the deers or the bunny rabbits, just my guess. Squaw Peak videos kind of freaky those uh there was like four or five guys whatever it was and uh one of them's like a bear so the one guy with the camera he starts filming it and uh this thing had some like bangs you know what i mean how someone might grow their bangs long off the front of their head and 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 he's filming it and pretty soon they're like i don't think it's a bear and then it stood up and turned side profile to go away from them and uh that that's it immediately quit filming the they took off running in fear you know it's kind of shocking i mean it's one thing you're filming a bear and everybody knows you need to be careful around a bear and then it stands up and it's actually a creature it's like a monster coming to life right in front of you and a lot of people are like i don't know why people panic and run well it's a shocking moment i'm pretty sure 
they're actually all stemmed from one tree. So the biggest life force in the entire world is actually a grove of aspens because it's actually all one organism. It just branches up with more and more trees from the same roots. They branch up from the same root. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I heard. The largest organism on the planet that they discovered is a, a grove of aspens somewhere. Look how beautiful it is back here, folks. He's checking his GPS coordinates. Cause the trail kind of forks here. Pretty crude trail. One goes off that way. Another one goes off this way. Check out some of these little mini pinnacles. I like to glass the ridges once in a while. Those of you that watch my channel, the Native Americans call them ridge walkers. So any chance you get, scan the ridges. Maybe you get lucky. Um, it's the fall, so it's berry season, nut season. So I have a hunch the creature's gonna be anywhere that there's ripe berries or ripe nuts. We're gonna find that cabin and take some photos and film it for you guys and see if we can find any type of Bigfoot evidence around it. Grove right here. Robert, here's some animal in this. I, I look at this little grove and uh, this is the color the leaves were. They were this color of red when that Bigfoot stood up in Squaw Peak. They thought it was a bear till it stood up. Turned off on this animal trail to see what's going on. I can see that it's an animal trail. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but it's definitely not a people trail. Looks like he might be that a might species be of wolf. Yeah, that might be a wolf spider. From what I understand, um, the bite of a wolf spider to a dog uh, can make them really sick and, and in even some instances kill them. Where a, a person usually does okay from a wolf spider bite, but it's not good if your dog gets bit by one. I'll be careful with passing him. I'm going to zoom in on this ridge line I see this space in the trees they probably have this marked out for hunting there could be a tree stand back here or a or a blind it's hunting season by the way we're not wearing our deer hunter orange because it's just the archery muzz muzzle loader. But in reality, I should have thrown on my jacket. See right there at that tree line, right up there by those aspens, that's a great place to set a blind or a tree stand right close to there. Um, the deer love to graze right at the tree line certain times of day. Yeah, it looks like it looks like a huge bedding area. Like a herd of elk have been bedding right there. Yeah. What's that behind this tree? I see something dark. Which tree? Um, I'm zooming in on it. Gosh, I can't see it in the viewfinder like I can with my own eyes. Okay, it's not that tree. It's the one. The small one to the left of the big tree, what is that? There, kind of looks like glowing. Like a, like something orange or something. Might be a stump. I don't know what it is. Trying to hold the camera steady. I'm freehanding it and zooming in, that's why there's so much movement. There's the last line of Quakies right across there at that clearing and then we, you get into the evergreens leave behind the quaking aspens we're gonna start getting into the greener trees 
neither of us have been to this abandoned cabin before so we're hoping it's there <laughs> <laughs> we don't know firsthand it should be but we're gonna find out the actual berry looks like a choke cherry the tree it's off of this this tree right here food source a whole berry, a whole berry. <laughs> found more of these found more of what we think is a choke cherry I'll have to do my research when I get home there they probably are but Tom um, there isn't very many left the acorns have already been ate in this canyon but there's still some berries left so that last half a mile to the, the cabin uh-huh Looks like it climbs another two to three hundred feet in elevation. Oh, well, not bad. So, and that's after it leaves the trail. So. Oh, we actually have to leave the trail? Uh, it has another little trail that branches off. That's supposedly it right there. Where are we at? Right there. Okay, okay. We've traveled that far already. Some more berries. Next. The plant that it's growing off of looks like, almost like a skunk cabbage. And I've never seen red berries on top of a skunk cabbage. So I'm not sure exactly what that is. But look, the plant's yellow and dying and the berries are nice red and ripe. You know, it makes you wonder, you know, some of these berries that people can't eat. Can other animals have better stomachs and and all that for it? I just heard a vocalization off that way. Didn't sound like a Bigfoot style vocalization. But I heard heard some like squawking. It's been rather quiet today. down there in that valley that's the direction of Wellsville there's at least four sighting reports I know of and that's what brings me into the area I just don't think the creature lives down in these valleys just comes down there once in a while and gets spotted so I've been wanting to come back into these mountains and Rob's from this area he's growing up here so he knows the area I was just gonna have to explore trial and error but he knows where some of the attractions are here the places I really want to see so he's taking me up into the mountains behind Mantua we're what we're, we're climbing Black Mountain that's correct yes we're climbing Black Mountain see what we can find at a point where we probably should be leaving the trail yeah, somewhere along this part, within the next few hundred feet. Looks like there's a creek. Yeah. Is that that blue thing? Box Elder Creek. Uh-huh. And of course, creeks can dry up, and so there's no uh, there's no guarantee that the creek's actually gonna have water in it. pop over here and see if I have enough uh, data because I have the GPS coordinates saved on Google Maps too so Google Maps is saying that it's in the other part of the trail Let's see where we're at it's saying it's over here on the other side of the trail this way no uh, as we continue to wrap around the other side of the trail, so this goes in a giant loop. It says it's somewhere over, pretty much over that way, straight across from us, probably a mile, two miles, straight across. Don't realize how steep the climb is till I look down. We've climbed about 2,000 feet. I can't believe someone had a cabin up here. I wonder if it was a trapping cabin. According to the lore, it was an old sheep herder's cabin. He used to keep sheep up here. Oh, so it was a seasonal cabin. Yeah. Okay. 
Do you know how old it is? Um, it was built sometime around the time that the pioneers came through and settled. This used to be called Little Valley. Um, Lorenzo Snow Time, because Lorenzo Snow came and dedicated uh, the valley down there, Little Valley. Is was, that was that at the end of the 1800s? Somewhere in there. Yeah, so this, this cabin could be 150 years old. Really easily. Yeah, makes me wonder how much of it's left. <laughs> the roof's caved in. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully. That much I do now. Hopefully, there's something discernible there. Edible. I've eaten these type before. I want to call them savant berries, but I'm pretty sure I'm calling them the wrong thing. Um, Mike uh, showed me them before, and we've ate them in the past. But we ran across some right here. If I was in a survival situation, I 99% uh, sure I can eat these things. I'm actually trying one right now. Have absolutely no taste. Can't even taste it. Um, I wonder if that's relocated. Look how that's in, up into the crook of the tree. Uh -huh. That log did not grow there. I don't know if you people can tell, but there's not a root system there. That, that is some type of a leaner. I would, uh, I'd go out on a limb and call that a structure. That is not natural this tree did not grow right there so someone or something placed it in the crook of that other dead tree not saying it's bigfoot related but if it is what does it mean is it a trail marker i often when i find something like this i always keep my ears open to see if i start hearing what sounds like bigfoot activity after something like that if this is a a marker saying you know this is my territory stay out once we go beyond this they may, might may start making some noise so that is the first structure up here that i would say is not natural that's not where that tree grew i don't know if you guys can tell but it was sat there into that perfect crook weird what were you telling you about that grizzly bear in Montana that uh, attacked uh, three different people in one day yeah in uh, I think it's called the gravelly mountains uh -huh. well the month before Jenny and I hiking around Ennis Lake in the uh, gravelly mountains so you know just a month before we were where uh, these people got attacked these people were out elk hunting and two elk hunters got attacked at like 7 30 in the morning they were able to get themselves to the hospital for um, help and then uh, that afternoon, a couple of miles away from that location, at about 6 p.m. in the afternoon, another elk hunter got attacked. And he had to be ambulance to a hospital. Well, last week, a fourth person in that area got attacked. He unloaded his handgun into it before it attacked him. So now they're looking for a wounded bear. They still haven't found it, but grizzlies attacked four people in the same area. And pretty much everybody's thinking it's probably the same rogue bear. But now it may even be more dangerous because it's, it's wounded. Look at that tree. Bottom half of the tree is missing. And the other half is just dangling. Because the upper half is mixed in with the other branches up there weird that's unusual see that just dangling in the tree see something like that and it's like how did it happen Looks like that's the bottom. Yeah. 
nuts yeah weird things yep i don't know why but a little bit further up there's a snap off snap off that points away from the animal trail that we're following not saying it isn't weather related but it's a snap off that's about nine feet off the ground the trail just seems to get more scant it looks like we're hiking up a dry creek bed rob uh -huh. well it's obvious that during the runoff this turns into a creek for sure oh we were off the trail we did we followed the creek bed up instead of following the trail we need to go up where those markers were okay because look how far off the trail we are oh, oh we're heading away from the yeah according to your gps we're heading away i'm glad you did your research before we come up here because uh where's the cabin supposed to be right there that red and where are we over here oh <laughs> we yes. were right there i think we just veered mm -hmm. off into the creek bed yeah we know where all right we need to go back this way people yeah i was like this doesn't seem like a a trail at all and uh it's an old shepherd's cabin that's probably over 150 years old and so it's kind of a, an attraction for people to hike up to it once in a while so there should be a you know a fairly blazed trail and we get onto this and this seems more like a creek and looking at his gps i i think it is a dried up creek there's an animal trail going off that way you know this is probably a pretty popular place when there's water in it yeah here is an elderberry bush i don't know if it's considered a bush or a tree what science but i call it a bush because they seem to bush out but um that right there is where the elderberries grow i don't see any of the elderberries on it they've already been ate um the moose really like to eat those and not only do the moose eat the elderberries they eat the actual plant you come back here in the middle of the winter and they may have uh this plant chewed down to the no line like right back there that branch that's been chewed off yeah the moose will come and just eat those uh i guess moose in some other language means uh stick eater because they'll eat these sticks of these elderberry bushes and other types of plants something's been bedding here probably elk or deer been or even moose have been laying here not too far from that elderberry bush Yeah, it looks like a herd of elk probably come in here and bed down sometimes. Looks like a very popular bedding area. Well, I'm going to call this area the elk beds. We found a mountaintop spring. I'm going to walk around it and look and see what kind of animals are taking a drink out of this. I can't tell what it is. It might be just be a crazy root formation. The ground is really hard. So it's not the... Look at how hard and rocky this ground is. Yeah. It's not the, the best for accepting a track. But I see where the ground's kind of sludgy over here. Pretty quick. I can see where elk have been walking around in this. I'll show you guys this giant moose track. Um, we're right near a mountain top spring, so we start looking to see what animals are using it. And I see this giant footprint, you know, and I get excited, you know, hoping it's Bigfoot, but <laughs> it is a Bigfoot, but it doesn't belong to Squatch. It belongs to a moose. And I'll put my foot beside it and, uh, that moose track looks like it's about six inches long by maybe six inches wide. And that's just one foot. 
And he's up here using the mountain top spring. Uh -huh. And Rob and I were just discussing how uh, moose is the most dangerous mammal in North America. It kills more people than any other animal. Actually kills more people than all the other animals combined. So, you know, people go out on these hikes and stuff and they're, they're worried about the bears and the mountain lions, but it's the, track? it's the moose that you, that cause boom. you the most problems. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is the time of day when they're going to come up and get a drink too. Another good print right there. Yeah, there's another track. Can't tell what kind of animal, but it doesn't look squat shaped. Yeah, mountaintop springs uh, get a really round shape. Almost anywhere you go, like the Blue Mountains of Oregon and Washington, uh -huh. that deduct springs um, up there, it's it's about as round as you can get. It's like a little pond. That's a famous place. That's one of the. In my opinion, the second most famous uh, Bigfoot video ever filmed was up there by the Duck Springs. So according to this, we're like right on top of it? Yeah, like I said, he it would make sense for him to build that cabin right yeah. close to this spring. So I'm betting if we finish following the trail, it might be right around the corner. Yep. Yeah. All right. I, I was like, why would someone build a cabin back here? But now that we found a reliable water source, it's starting to make sense. It's also starting to get a lot more chilly. <laughs> yeah. Are you cold? No, I'm good. I got that thermal layer, but my ears are feeling it. Did you bring a... Well, tuck your ears in your hat, man. <laughs> my... <laughs> if you can. Oh, it'll smash them with your glasses. That's... Whoa! That's kind of a cool view, people. There's the spring right there and mountain behind it. And then the mountain we're on is called Black Mountain. Unsure why it gets its name, but I'm thinking because uh, this part of the mountain gets in the shade real quick. Probably gets dark up here real fast. Air scat people. Actually, I I'm almost 100% positive it's bear scat. Look at um, all the seeds in it. Um, it looks like it's been filling up on choke cherries, and uh, the scat pile was probably much bigger a day or two ago when it actually did this, but. Um, uh, some of those berries look they're not digested like that one right there I don't know if you guys can see that that one's not digested so birds insects other animals come along and they like to eat the um stuff out of the bear scat and if you guys ever watch bear grills he'll even eat the seeds out of bear scat I'm not going to do that but um, bear scat usually doesn't last long because there's a lot of animals that are uh, interested in the leftovers so we've got a black bear that's been up here uh, probably a day or two ago. Uh, bear scat doesn't last long because there's a lot of edible stuff in this. So. so Rob and I are up here hiking with a black bear in the area, which we knew we were. But that is 100% confirmation that there's one up here. And right next to the watering hole too, it probably got thirsty. Yep. Yeah. Come over, had a drink, took a dump. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good life right there. Uh-huh. And uh, we're pretty fortunate to find it because that isn't going to last long. A magpie finds that and it'll camp out on it until it's gone. This part right here is so steep and I don't know if it shows on the camera, but we're like walking like we have to lean back a good 45 degrees so we don't slip and fall on our asses we've we've climbed over 2,000 feet on this hike and my calves are filling it my um calves knock on wood never cramp up on hikes and today they've been cramping up i'm 
drinking lots of water i i'm blaming it on uh, i'm probably dehydrated on top of uh, the 2000 foot climb and broke and then probably just decayed enough that it fell off that's a widow maker you don't want that coming down on you Yeah, it looks like maybe a lightning, like you're saying, lightning may have struck the the tree. Maybe, you know, maybe that, I, or we believe that that right there is where it came off of. Perhaps what killed the tree is lightning strike and the explosion from the lightning strike threw it over here. I mean, I just don't know. Unless aliens did it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody did it on purpose just to mess with somebody who would come walking up and notice it. Well, that's several hundred pounds up there. Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds of pounds. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, Something running through the trees behind us. We just saw a giant moose track up by the spring. Not too far back. And then we also found... Uh, um, some bear scat that can't be more than a day or two old But what sounded like it was running through the trees t to me just now was uh, like an elk moose or a deer I just heard dumping on the ground Okay, the, the thumping, that could be a moose. Did you hear it? It is the rut. Yeah, if that's a bull moose, that big giant track we found, I don't want to run into him. I'd like to see him from a distance or the safety of a car. <laughs> Yeah, that was some pretty, pretty loud percussion to the ground. That was a big animal. Deer, elk, and moose get into the rut. They get really ornery. Um, last week in Colorado, an elk that was, uh, you know, a bull elk that was in the rut attacked a girl. And uh, a guy had to get a truck and drive it off and put the truck between it and her to get it to stop attacking her. And it even gored the truck. I, I saw the video. It was in the national news. So anybody watching this video, you might be able to look up the video of the attack. But, you know, those animals that normally run from you most of the year, when they start getting in their rut, they get an ornery disposition so this is a bad time of year to run into a, a bull elk or a bull moose and that uh, moose track that we found up by that spring that's one of the largest ones I've seen I mean, I've, I've probably seen comparable but that's on the upper end of size for sure found some of those white berries I've seen uh, several varieties of berries up here that uh, that bear scat that we found earlier I mean who knows it could be squats but I'm going out on a limb and saying it's probably bear scat um, it looked like it was just full of choke cherries. And the choke cherries, the ones we found, they're pretty sparse, so animals are going to town on them up here. Track, we found a couple of tracks right here in the it goes soft. right there, comes in right there, probably deer. Then here's another a big one that looks like it's probably a, a moose right there. Mm -hmm. The vocalization off that way. Did you That's hear? That's a moose right there. Another moose. You see that? Yeah, yeah. That's a moose right there. And it came down from here. You can see the boom, boom. Yeah, boom. he made his own trail, mm -hmm. as they usually do. 
I heard vocalization off that way. Oh, that's the elk call. That's elk. Yeah, it sounds like elk oh. bugling. But man, what, we heard something on the ground. You thought you heard an antler rattling too. Are you banging out the sheep? It's actually a bit of a We found a bedding area in a carcass. Yeah. Yeah, this is where an elk either died of natural causes or he suffered a predation. It hasn't really been eaten from, which is kind of surprising. He's got lots of the meat on him seems unbroken. I'm going to check around for footprints and see if a predator's been here. If a mountain lion or a bobcat's been coming in and out of here, they'll leave scat piles nearby. So I want to kind of check the area out and see if I can find if a predator's been in here. There is an animal trail. I don't know if the camera picks it up as well as I can see it, but you can tell an animal's been working its way in and out of these bushes right up to the carcass and Rob pointed out that the head's been separated from the carcass because the jaw bones are right over there now um, a mountain lion um, usually breaks the neck to make a kill so I don't know if you know if a mountain lion did this if it makes it you know to where the head's easier to separate because it already broke the neck but um, I don't see the rest of the head. All I see is the jaw bones. Yeah, the rest of the head is missing. And I would guess by gravity, it's probably somewhere down this. Or uh, an animal may have drug it off. Possible. Like a coyote or... This leg's been lopped off too. That leg's clean lopped off. Yeah, and it wasn't done with a knife or anything like that. It's uh, separated at the joint. There are teeth marks. Yeah, I'm sure uh, if it died of natural causes, uh, all kinds of animals are coming and scavenging, but that's a rear, rear leg. Yep. It's from right there. Yeah, a rear leg. The other rear leg made it up here. All right, well, we're going to look around this uh, carcass a little bit and scour the area and see if we can figure out if... A predator may have taken it down. Yeah, come look at the viewfinder. Yeah, I see, that's crazy. And he's definitely a cave. Yeah, there's like two caves in an overhang. That's as far as this camera zooms in, and that's about, that's probably two miles away. Oops. It's probably closer to three miles away. All right, we had a good vantage point. We were below those earlier. Now we're above them and can see the cave, so just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything in there. All right, we found some acorns. They're not quite ripe yet. These ones are kind of small on on this uh, oak brush. But um, I noticed right before what a person would consider them ripe, the animals are already eating them. They still eat them when they're when they're when green. It's starting to get a little ripe right there. So we're finding we're finding bear, deer, elk, moose food, and if Squatch is around, I'm sure he's eating the same thing. Lots of oak brush. Everything, uh, everything within about 20, 30 feet of the camera that I'm pointing at is oak brush with acorns. And it just keeps going down the hill too. Yeah. I could probably 100 to 200 feet down. Yep. 
I'm gonna keep my eye open for animals that are eating this. And above us, up on the mountain above us, that's all oak. Cool. Wow. <laughs> We've already hiked all the way back into all of that. That's where we found that mountaintop spring. I call it a mountaintop spring because it's pretty high elevation. But we've been all around down there. Right, it was right above that aspen grove right there. Remember, we went right yeah. to that aspen grove. We, to it. we actually left the aspen grove and got into the alpine area. Uh -huh. All right, we're going to keep looking for Squatch. We still haven't found that, uh, that old abandoned cabin. Hopefully, we run across it soon. That one looks a little squatchy. There's toes at the front. If it's a Bigfoot track, it's only the front of the mid tarsal. Not quite sure. Maybe it's an illusion from another animal that uh, that crossed the trail that I'm on. But I'm not seeing claws at the front of it like what a bear would leave. But I thought it would be interesting. I only half a track if it does belong to Squatch so I'm not gonna sit and measure it um, what I do see of it it's about uh, eight inches long from this part of the mid tarsal to the big toe all right carry on interesting where this dead tree ended up right the perfectly in the crook of two trees what are the odds Maybe natural. And if it's not, if there's a squatch in the area and he's trying to send a signal, what does it mean? There's a creek right there. Looks kind of dry, but it leads down to this spring. And we were calling this spring a pond because it's so big. A lot of birds down here. The birds have been pretty quiet today. I haven't really heard much. We've had a challenge finding the cabin that's supposed to be back here, but uh, it's off trail and 150 years old, perhaps. I would think that the guy would build it next to a reliable water source. You know, over a hundred years ago, he was uh, bringing his sheep up here during the summertime. Found some more berries. That one looks really ripe. Our five mile hikes turned into like a six or a seven. We've uh, gone in every nook and cranny looking for that abandoned cabin. And uh, it's kind of nice to have a goal when you're out on these Squatch expeditions. And our goal is to kind of find that cabin and look around for any type of evidence or activity. But we're finding plenty of food and water sources back in here. No rhyme or reason, we just found a random bone. Large bone. I mean, here's my uh, here's my 12 inch foot next to the bone. Don't really know what animal that's off of. This is anywhere nearby. Yeah. It must have been dragged here by some wildlife. Yeah. Weird. Oh. It has been a brutal day of hiking. We're up another dried creek bed, trying to find this uh, uh, old uh, shepherd's cabin. We've been up every nook and cranny. We're hoping this is it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> We've uh, gone up and down in elevation about 2,000 feet. We just climbed a thousand, or a uh, hundred feet just barely in the last five minutes and we have another 200 feet to go. Uh-huh. I mean my... In less than a quarter mile. My goal is to track down uh, Bigfoot for a photo opportunity, but it's nice to have uh, these little carrots on the stick like this guy's uh, old abandoned cabin that's well over a hundred years old. I just enjoy that kind of stuff, so... This is the last nook and cranny we're gonna check out and then uh, we're gonna, we need to head back to the vehicle. The night's falling upon us. Another animal bone. A vertebrae. Not anywhere close to the last bone that we showed you, but 
another animal bone. This is a creek, so it could very well push bones down and spread them out. All right, it's getting dark. Hopefully we find that soon. We think we found the source of the bones that are scattered about. Um, you got a pelvis and majority the, of a vertebrae, a couple of ribs. The rib bone's so big, it might be an elk, but very well could be a deer. In the right area, yes. I'm watching the ridge lines for Bigfoot shapes. And I think I found a moose. Yeah, it's a moose laying down. <laughs> he just laid down. <whistles> Have to look at that on the big screen. Moose or an elk. All right, it's not the Bigfoot we're looking for, but I just want to show you guys how far away I was when I spotted that thing. Looking for Bigfoot and saw a dark shape and it was that moose. I really think it's a moose now that I've zoomed in on it. Yeah. All right. First sign of wildlife we've seen today. They're hunkering down because of the hunt. Just filmed the moose across the way right there and uh, had no idea we had to get to the top. Here's the cabin we're looking for. This cabin may be 150 years old. I know it's like turn of the 19th century end of the 1800s that uh, Shepard made his uh, Shepherd cabin. And look, you can see a reservoir or a lake down below. That's, that's Manaway. That's Manaway Reservoir. Oh, we're clear above Manaway. Amazing. That's Molly Gipple. Wow. Yep, we had to get to the top of the mountain. Had no idea it was on the very top. Look, the, the roof is blown off. A sheep herder would spend his summers up here on the top of this mountain tending his flocks. That's what that looks like of a heater, something that went on a. It looks to me like it might be a, um, a water heater that you can uh, run next to your fireplace flume. There's another one right there. Yep. So he can get hot water with his, with his fireplace. All right, we're going to take a look around for Bigfoot evidence. Uh, the last pictures I saw of this, it still had the roof, so I was like, oh, that would make a great shelter for animals or a possible rogue Bigfoot. We're going to look around for any type of animal Bigfoot evidence, and I want to take a few photos of this thing. Had Rob jump inside the cabin so you guys could, you know, probably don't want to get more than two or four people in here, but I... I believe the guy that tended sheep up here was up by here by himself for the most part. But yeah, we're in a Bigfoot sighting hot spot. I like uh, small goals like this to um, help force me explore the area better than I might. Um, just because this is a Bigfoot sighting hot spot, I doubt I would ever have climbed to the top of this mountain, except for without the knowledge that there's an abandoned cabin here. So it got me to spread out and look for Bigfoot evidence in additional places. I hope you guys enjoy our Bigfoot expeditions. If we see anything cool on our hike out of here, I'll make sure I put it at the end of this video. Keep on watching, we're gonna keep on squatching. Robert and I have found ourselves out here after dark, trying to make it back to the vehicle. I'm pretty sure we're on the right path, but this happens all too often. I always make sure that I have a headlamp in all my backpacks. We weren't planning on being out here after dark, but it happened. A five mile hike turned into an eight mile hike, but we saw a lot of cool things. Um, we're here because uh, 
you know, I asked Rob to bring me back here because uh, so many Bigfoot sightings have happened around here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching. <laughs>